Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. Um, so let's just dive in. Bernard Liotto, uh, you're a managing partner at Baldeton Capital, one of the largest tech-focused VC firms in Europe. Uh, you previously co-founded Business Object in 1990, which became a world leader in BI, and uh, you were CEO for 15 years. Uh, notably, it was the first European software IPO uh, in NASDAQ in 1994 and got acquired by SAP in 2008. Uh, you led investments in a number of companies, including which Aircall, Olivier Payes, you are the CEO of Aircall, a co-founder. Uh, it's a SaaS solution for a business phone conversation based in Paris and in the US. Started inside eFounder Startup Studio. Uh, Aircall is also a 500 startup San Francisco alumnus. And in January, you raised a seed round of $2.7 million, uh, led by Belden Cap Capital, and uh, for a total of 3.5 million raised. Finally, Gilles Samoun, you are an entrepreneur and engineer who started working in SaaS back in 1999 with your company Qualys. Uh, today you run Sales Machine, a customer success company, and you've been CEO six times. You have invested uh, in startups as a business angel like Zenchev, Agolia, Blablacar, you also sit at the board of Criseo and GetApp, um, and you were entrepreneur in residence at Benchmark, now Valdezman Capital. As such, you've seen all three sides of the table for the matter that's of interest today, how to use your investors. Maybe you can start um, by telling us, uh, so what can an entrepreneur expect from his investor? In particular, what to expect from a private investor, a business angel versus a VC fund? Okay, so the, the question is quite broad. Uh, I think that if you can tap to, to, uh, to understand the market, th things have evolved very, very much, uh, you know, from you know, 20 to 15 years now and to now, probably because of competition amongst the different VCs. I think now the VCs are much more entrepreneur friendly, so helping much more the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the entrepreneurs. So that, that's the first thing. Where do they kind of help besides the money? Uh, I, I would say in different sectors and different stage of, of, the, of, the, of the company can be from you know fundraising but uh, i mean f for me uh, at the seed ra as, as a, at the seed round for example really to help craft the product craft the market you know that that's very very important and i think you know, a lot of people here uh, are at that, that stage that that's important so there is some type of investors who are you know knowledgeable uh, and built for helping uh, the startups at that stage after that you can have the uh, larger vc fund which can help you uh, you know, from the business st standpoint, you know, international internationalization of your product and your and your company, as well as uh, you know, uh, grow the company and grow the, you know the you know the the, uh, the from the equity point of view. So that, that there is different stages. So I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> maybe Olivier, you um, you are a seed stage SaaS startup. Um, how do you use uh, your business angels and your VCs? Do you ask them for strategic advices? for uh, access to their contact list, for potential partners, clients, for hiring some specific talents, maybe for your follow-up rounds? Yeah, so essentially we did two rounds. One with essentially angels, like last year, 12 months ago. And then I used these angels last year. Some of them were experts in the telecom space, some of them very connected in the US, especially San Francisco, some of them very good on the sales side. And then we made a second round in January this year with uh, Balderton and Funders Club. And here it changed a little bit. So I really I started talking a lot less to my angels. And essentially, I'm talking with Balderton and Bernard in particular. And not that much on very say, small details like, can you help me find this kind of profile? but more on strategic thing. So I mean, the real value is about, we've got a, you know, we've got that kind of problem. What do you think? You've seen that 20 times. Um, how, how should we take that forward? And we had a board this morning, and it was exactly this. So we first time in our life so we have what's this the, kind of what's problem. What's the best advice he gave you this morning? I think there's an advice he keeps on repeating, which is you have to think ahead of your growth. So the natural tendency, especially I think if you're a first-time entrepreneur, is you say, hey, let's say we're growing 20% of each month. So we're at 100. So it's going to be 120. So okay. So I'm going to, you know, I have maybe a team of 20 guys. I'm going to hire one, two, three more guys. But it compounds. And so you have to think, yeah, but in six months, that means we're going to be 
actually 60 people, and we're going to be invoicing three times more. And so it's very hard to just think that there's a pace that, that compounds, that goes very fast. So his, his advice, the best advice he's, he's giving, including this morning, is if when you upgrade the product, are you ready to do times 10 on the, on the load of the product, on the load of the customers? Bernard, maybe you can give us some um, historical perspective. Do startups need new things today um, than you know, 10 years ago or even five years ago? I, I mean, I think they get more things today than they were uh, 10 or, or, or 20 years ago, partly because uh, I think the entrepreneurs have expressed themselves and have chosen um, a, a particular type of investor, I think. And has changed probably more here in Europe than, uh, than in the US. But uh, I think the, the, the VC landscape in Europe was very much um, people who had financial expertise essentially, so we're really investors and people coming out, and so entry and exit where they're real focused. I think it's not enough for an entrepreneur today. Uh, the entrepreneurs are expecting people who will bring money, but will also bring a certain level of experience and guidance uh, so that they, uh, they, 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 they can drive their strategy going forward. You always saw that in the U.S. because a lot of the VCs are ex-entrepreneurs, but you didn't quite see that here. Uh, I think uh, I think this is coming. This is coming here, and I, I hope to to think that it's very valuable. I mean, I was an entrepreneur myself for 20 years. Uh, at the beginning, I had European VCs, and I have and I had uh, a U.S. business angel, and I ended up having also uh, uh, U.S. VCs. But mostly, the person who helped me the most was the U.S. angel, uh, who was an entrepreneur who had been on board of, of large companies and really understood the sector I was in. Uh, and that was, uh, that was extremely valuable. So um, I think that's my belief, is that what entrepreneurs want right now in Europe, and that's what they deserve right now in Europe also. Maybe, Jill, you have something to add on that matter, since you've had investors and you've invested in companies. Yeah, I, I completely countries. agree with this. You know, it's that... Uh, a different stage, you, div you need different type of, uh, of, of uh, investors. N don't just stick that to VCs, you know, you have angels. At the seed stage, you know, like myself, I'm trying to pick, you know, few angels which have very deep expertise to whom I can, you know, uh, like the founders of GetApp, you know, uh, and others, uh, really to, they can help me on certain topics because they are very, very uh, knowledgeable in that field. And, and I don't need more, you know, I don't need, you know, how to raise money and et cetera. That's not the stage. Later on, you know, when you have, you know, uh, challenges like, you know, uh, growing the company at a large scale because the company is, you know, a hyper growth like uh, uh, Olivier's company, uh, you need the expertise of uh, Bernard because he has done that already. He knows how to, uh, you know, hire people and, and to really scale uh, a company. So that's where you need, you know, expertise and experience on, on the market. Things are also very different, you know, as um, in the U.S. and Europe, okay? In, uh, in the U.S., you have a, a very different cultures, more entrepreneurs than, uh, but again, it's, it's changing and evolving here it's in Europe as well. The, the maybe the one thing that I would add and, and the counsel I would give to you all when you're thinking about how to use your investors is, is really get to know them and understand uh, their skill set. Because the, the reality is that uh, different investors have different skill sets. They have had different experiences. And uh, if you ask them something that they are really not good at, that you're going to be disappointed, and then you're going to say, well, our VCs are useless, right? Uh, and, and I think they're, they're not all, uh, we are not all good at everything. Uh, so some people can really help you on strategy. Some people can really help you on how to grow into the U.S. Some people can help you more in, in your hiring for developers, and some can be just really great at, at giving introductions. So really try to help them for and leverage their skill set as best as you can, and you will get the best result. And also to be very, very specific. If I take the example we have been working, I'm, I've been working with Bernard, if I need an introduction, so I'm not going to ask him, Bernard, could you uh, ask you know, your knowledge, you know, all your portfolio company uh, you know, for, for uh, a meeting? He doesn't have the time. 
So if I have a, a specific name that I know, you know, he can reach and ask for uh, 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 an introduction, he will definitely will do it. But uh, and, and 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 the way I'm doing it uh, actually is that I'm writing the email on behalf of investors. He probably will tweak it, but I, I just want to save his time. So I don't need him to, uh, uh, you know, to 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 waste a lot of time trying to think, you know, what's the best way to do it. So really to prepare the work to make the best use. That's what the first thing. The second thing is that try to do some. And particularly with the angels, uh, which are more, and because they have more time to dedicate, uh, uh, do some regular meetings just to update them, okay? And uh, on the product strategy, on, on the business plan, and etc. So spend time. Uh, it doesn't need to be uh, you know very formal, but you know just to share share information. That's where you find the first the expertise, and second uh, also the the personal fit with the, the investors. And to to stay on that topic. How would you best optimize your relationship with investors uh, to get the more out of them, Olivier? What's the? Is there a, like a an ideal frequency for board meetings? Uh, how are board meetings orga organized at Valdeton? Are they specifically, um, you know, cleaned and, and efficient? Do you have some insights yes, for so all those startups who dream to be in Valdeton's portfolio? Okay, so it, it's. Um, I'm not sure I have. I can give advice. Probably uh, you guys can. I can just say what, what I'm doing. What there's a few principles I'm trying to respect. One is a monthly update for everyone. It's timely and it's beginning of the month for all everyone that has put money in the company. And someone put five thousand dollars a year and a half ago. Is getting the same update, and it's kind of very transparent. So all the key metrics. It's, it's a one. It's a one-page email. Generally. Um, Linked to that, I tend to be kind of um, very honest about the negative things, um, but that's more my nature. I'm trying, I mean, what worries me at night is what doesn't go well. So this is what I tend to share with investors. So when something doesn't go well, it, the email will start with that. And actually some investors told me, hey, you shouldn't say that because the, the month has been fantastic, but it looks like you're dying. So I say, beware that some investors want to be proud of you. So, uh, so I'm trying to, to mitigate that. But so the second advice, I mean, timely, I think is important, timely uh, update. And second is the, um, the honesty, um, um, the honesty in the communication. It's better to say upfront that some things don't go well because many things don't go well at startups. Now, on your question on the board meetings, when, when Bernard invested, he asked, he requested a f meeting every month. And I'm, I, I thought it was kind of a lot because I heard like every two months or these kind of things. And actually I think that's, that's great, that's great um, pace because the company works per month. So we have, let's say we have daily targets and weekly targets and monthly targets for let's say revenues. But monthly target is the, 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 you know, the, the biggest horizon we have. So it's fine to just step back. So I think every month is fine. And in the way we do the, the board, we try to have, let's say, overview of the results and a few deep dives. So we pick one or two topics, which are, let's say this morning was like NPS and new organization, and we just try to spend half of the board on this. I think that's probably, I'm quite happy with, with the way we do it now. Yeah, do you have something to add? Uh, well, I mean, I think uh, this is the rhythm that we have implemented together, so it's, it's all good. I would, uh, I would emphasize again what Olivier said, which is transparency is absolutely key. So share everything with your, with your board members and your investor because that's how you're going to build trust. And, and that's critical. With Olivier, you know, I know everything that is happening in a company. And that's great because then we can talk really about the, the issues as opposed to me trying to second guess. Uh, but if this metric is here, so it probably means that this is what's happening and therefore he's not telling me completely how things are going. So transparency is great. I would say... Define at the very beginning what are the key metrics you're going to report on a, on a monthly basis. Don't have, uh, you know, 500, just have like four or five, which are your, 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 key, uh, your, your key metrics. And then have them. Don't spend too much time on this. It shouldn't be that the essential of the conversation should not be on metrics. It should be on, uh, again, what we discussed, like some specific issues or... Uh, are you constantly looking far ahead in the future? Are you preparing yourself for the next six months, for the next year? Uh, do, you have, do you have that uh, in, in mind? So having, to me, I think it's really important to have uh, a regular pace because then you know, okay, the, the, these meetings are set in advance. You will have that conversation. 
But also what I tell the, the, uh, the entrepreneurs is that don't hesitate to have a, to, to call, to call me if you have something that you want to discuss off base because the, a, a lot of things happen outside of the meetings and uh, you should have the, um, the confidence that you can call at any time. Okay. Uh, besides um, board meetings and, you know, meetings or calls, are there some, I don't know, I've heard that some VCs are building platforms to industrialize or optimize the way they interact with each startup. Is it something that you've heard too or that you think people should start doing? Uh, I don't think so on my, on my end. I think, especially at the early stages, uh, I think everybody is different. It's a very much, uh, in my view, very much a personal relationship that you, that you build. Uh, you have to respect the way an entrepreneur wants to drive his, his business. So I don't think you can format everything. There are specific things that you should, again, agree on uh, getting the data regularly. But to me, if it gives me on a piece of paper, because that's convenient to him, or it gives me an Excel, or it gives me on a, uh, on a SAS, whatever, I don't care. I just want to make sure I have, uh, I have the information. After a, a while, I think two, three years in, when the company is already generating substantial amount of revenue, yeah, maybe you can format things a bit more, but not at the beginning. There's, I mean, from what we have, one of our investors in is Kima. It's probably invested in half of the French ecosystem. And they have a Slack room. Um, and it's, it's nice. Um, it's nice uh, because we can connect very easily to anyone. So we just actually sign up to a new service that someone, you know, pinged me on this and say, "Hey, we want to try." It's called Payfit or whatever. So why not? Boom! And so it helps connect, and uh, and they're extremely accessible. So and that I mean they formalize it in a way so that we we'll, we feel we're part of a community of the let's say the French ecosystem. So that that's a good idea. And there's one other thing which is a good idea. From Badgerton, which is they said doesn't change the world, but still it helped me. Which was the um, the event you made a couple of weeks ago called CEO Collective, where you bring all the CEOs of your portfolio during a, a two day, let's say from 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 noon to noon, one one good, good day, and that helps because it's like one of the few opportunities you have to step out of your business and realize how small you are, how good some other people are, and how far the world, you know, how far still you have to work. So that. These, these kind of things helps um, just, you know, st step out of the day-to-day -day work and just, you know, look at the vision. Okay. Um, a lot of startups, especially in the B2B world, choose their investors knowing that they might need them to um, achieve uh, their next uh, round of fundings. So tell me, how does that work? Uh, is it your job? Is it the job of the CEO? How, how is it? How does that work? Well, I think it's a uh, it's a joint responsibility. So this is the p the the time when uh, an investor really needs to help. You can't, uh, as an investor, you can't just step outside of that and say, "Hey, I I just don't know how to do this." Uh, otherwise, that would be pretty bad. But we have to be involved in all the different steps. The first step is to discuss the strategy around the fundraise. When are we going to do it? How much? With what objective? What kind of investor would we like? Is it going to be European and US? Uh, what kind of criteria and so on? Then we, as an investor, we certainly have to uh, discuss what are the potential options. Uh, put our, I mean, uh, this is this is an area where we have the network. So we should, as as investor, we have to know all the pos possibilities or the possible future investors. So if we're a Series A, we have to know the Series B. It's not. I mean, Olivier, I don't expect him to necessarily know the actual partners in Sequoia or, uh, you know, Andreessen and so on. That's our job. We can provide the introduction. Uh, we, we can help, uh, you know, frame, you know, the pitch and so on, help them rehearse and help them with the process. But I think we need to be very involved, for sure. Yeah, but at the end, the entrepreneur does the sales job. <laughs> so <laughs> they sell their companies, you know. But, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's where they, uh, the huge value from them. I mean, uh, if you take Balloton, for example, they can introduce to almost all the, big, the, la the largest VCs in the U.S. It's invaluable. Is it something that you experienced as a CEO of your previous oh yeah. startups? Yes, because I mean, I've been lucky enough to uh, have uh, you know knowledge, I mean, uh, large VCs and, and 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 known. If you raise money from, uh, I'm talking about the US, not want to uh, to upset any anyone here, but uh, if you if you if you raise money from, uh, uh, I would say, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
one VCs in you know in the US and a very large one you know in top tier one, uh, it makes a huge difference. It is to make a huge difference in hiring people because you can attract talent. You can you know next step you know which is always you have to be proactive so to think about the next step. You know uh, yes they have uh, the fact that you know they trust you they are on the board they know the company because they have put these processes in, in place you know in terms of reporting and etc. Uh, a new investors will trust you even more. All these things align you know makes you uh, you know. Uh, makes the value of uh, top tier uh, top tier VC. So the, the difference between the two makes a lot of difference. You said that uh, entrepreneurs need business driven VCs. Are there any others besides Balaton that do the job? Maybe you shouldn't answer. <laughs> there's none. There's none. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think they are. Uh, well, can I answer or? Okay. Just quick, quick. Uh, no, I think there are now uh, more who have uh, had experience, but also you have uh, you have VCs who so you have VCs who have people who have been actual operators. So they have run businesses, who have been in in startups, they have grown with businesses. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to have someone who's been a CEO of a of a company, but someone who has been an operator, I think, is is really important. And then you also have people who have been, uh, you know, associated and uh, with lots of different companies. So they they acquired different kind of business expertise. Uh, but so that's something that you really need to uh, to, to verify. But I would say Bolton is a bit unique because we have uh, of the five partners, three of us have been uh, real business uh, drivers. We have two CEOs and one who is, I mean, Lars was on the executive team of Uber and Dropbox in the U.S. for, uh, you know, the, the past eight years. And so brings a s considerable experience. Gilles, maybe you have a deep No, I'm not going to name anyone, but uh, I, I, I think you have different kind of VCs for different uh, stages. You have the early stage, the seed VCs, which are specialized in SaaS, for example. Then after that, you have, uh, I would say, what I call the national VCs. Uh, which are acting at the, at the country level, which can be you know quite helpful. And then you have the I would say the international VCs. Most of them are in the UK, in London <laughs> these days. Uh, and then you have the US because at the end, very often the exit are in the US. So you want to reach that uh, that market as well. So that that's 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 a different. Uh, but you, you won't name names. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something? specific one might uh, expect from a uh, VC when you're a B2B startup uh, versus a B2C one, a consumer one? I think the key is that they understand your business. Okay, and uh, you know, when we talk about SaaS, I've been lucky enough to build a SaaS company back in 99. Uh, you know, the, uh, my first investor was Bessemer in the US. They really started to, uh, to build a model and that's what led to uh, you know, the, the, the SaaS metrics. And uh, so they, 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 they really understand that business. That now is, is becoming more and more, but you still have you know, people which really understand the B2B business. And uh, same thing when you select the partners, uh, you have some partners which are much more more experienced in B2C over with B2B, so in over in software or hardware, whatever. So you know, select the partners based on their, their competency. The only thing I would add is that um, you should look at the partner. He's the, the most important one, but look at the firm also and the uh, the diversity of the partnership. What other competencies is in the team or can this group help you with other services uh, I mean there, there are very few European VCs that have full service models like Andreessen has but a number of us have I mean provide more than just a partner they provide also maybe talent management services or PR services or other types of, of services to help you recruit or help you promote or position your company better and uh, I think as you, as you scale, this is something that can be very valuable. Yeah, actually, this is something which is interesting because it's very unknown. Uh, typically, if you deal with uh, Bernard on your board, uh, he's the interface. But actually, within the fund, there are also plenty of people that you can leverage, and very often you don't know them. So uh, this, this kind of event where you go and meet the, the partners and, and the people from the firm help you to understand. So again, except uh, Andreessen, which are very specialized, uh, others, they have the, res the internal resources. You know, Bernard doesn't have the time to help you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to uh, recruit someone. But within the firm, you know, there is one person who received all the, C the CVs and, and, and candidates, which can help you. And very often, 
you don't try to, or you don't even have the reflex or the, 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 to, to, to reach them out. And you, you deal with the partners, but not with the rest of the firm. We're going to wrap up, but maybe to conclude, Olivier, you can tell us what happens at this CEO collective events. What happens at these events? Um, right, so it's it's very good mix. First, it's a fantastic place if you have a chance to go there. It's called Soho Farmhouse, I think. It's in, the, in the Oxfordshire, it's a kind of a gentleman's club or something like that, but very modern uh, and very nice place. And so essentially, you've got conferences, really short and high level, on two topics, essentially culture and like the CEO role. I mean, typically CEO topics. So how do you build a company? How do you processes, etc. And a second part was more on that forward looking uh, into the world. So like AI, uh, economic cycles, what's going to happen in the next 20 years, and what, what does that mean for your companies? So this is kind of deep content, but quite short. And the biggest time is dedicated to networking, either with the partners of Patterson, which actually I didn't know really before that, because you just have one partner meeting to get the investment and that's it. So that's extremely useful. And second, with all the other uh, portfolio companies around activities, which can be biking or whatever. Uh, but that helps a lot uh, because you realize the diversity. I mean, at the same time, diversity of problematics, and you realize that many people had the same problems that the one you're facing on culture, scaling, or whatever that is. So this is how it works from uh, so Thursday at noon until Friday at noon. And, and that's it. And there's a poker party as well at night, but okay. How investors can you help with the can help you with the exit phase? Uh, again, I mean, it's the, there is no straight answer because it doesn't. Uh, you know, it depends of uh, if you're getting approached. So typically, uh, you have an inbound offer, or you start to do a, a search. Uh, you know, with a firm. So you know, where the investors can help you is you know the first of all. Uh, their reputation and knowledge, you know, also reassure and, and secure the buyers. Okay, more serious uh, interested, uh, but also that, but that with net, then their network uh, helps a lot. You know, and uh, uh, I've seen a lot of inbound, uh, so you know, uh, of acquisition coming because the investors uh, highly sp spoke about the company outside to uh, potential uh, buyers. And suddenly, you know, that's raised uh, the attention of potential buyers who comes because. Inbound is where you have the best value, okay? So, <laughs> I mean, in general, uh, and, and that, uh, you know, events like this where uh, not only they invite the CEOs, but uh, they also invite, you know, for parties to, uh, to join, that helps. And because they have a view of all the market, the different dynamics, and they, they also are in contact very often with the potential buyers, they have that, uh, you know, uh, what an investment banker will always know, do, uh, they also have that kind of relation, and they, they can drive and say, hey, look at our company. I mean, we're not for sale, but, you know, uh, eventually you can do some partnerships. That's always the, the way the, co the conversation starts, and uh, then it leads to something. Yeah, I think there are a couple of phases. There's the phase of the preparation phase, which can be years long, uh, because again, it's it's uh, our, our role is maybe to help the entrepreneur raise its visibility with potential acquirers. If the exit would be an M&A exit, again, a lot of the exits can, I mean, are IPOs, and that's a, a different mindset. But we try first of all to work with the CEO in terms of helping him determine what could be a potential exit, uh, and how you prepare this years and years in advance by building the right relationship. Afterwards, I mean, a number of us, we have had the, uh, the opportunity to be involved in, in several M&A transactions. So there are ways to do it in a tactics, and, and there's a lot of, how do you position yourself? We are very often uh, consulted by the M&A um, heads, like, you know, the corporate development head of Microsoft or Oracle, or the, we, we, we know these people, so they come to us, they're gonna get, they're gonna try to get the signals, you know, because they can get a signal from the CEO. So first of all, preparing this, understanding, okay, is the CEO ready, really ready to sell, or he is pushing back? And what does the, uh, what is the attitude of the investor? Did, and and it, it's, it's important to prepare this, because again, the, the guys who are, running the acquisitions at these large companies, they're very sophisticated, and they're very good at understanding these particular signals. So we have a role to play, and we try to do so as, as best as we can, and we have done it a few times. Okay, well, that's a wrap. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks.